All right, welcome to another edition of Why This Is A Great Spiritual Song. Today, we have Defying Gravity. Now, this comes from the Wicked soundtrack. Came out in 2003. All right, so this song, there's sort of like some dialogue uh, interspersed in it. I'm, I'm not gonna really go into that much. I might use some of it, but, um, and just, and if you haven't heard this song before, I recommend listening to it first, uh, just so that it's fresh in your mind. Um, and also this is my spiritual interpretation of this song, um, through the lens of unity, uh, non do unity consciousness, non-duality. This is not a, um, you know, this different, this is different than the author intention or or what the um through the show right through the musical right so this is my personal spiritual interpretation all right let's let's get started defying gravity something has changed within me something is not the same I'm through with playing by the rules of someone else's game. Too late for second guessing, too late to go back to sleep. It's time to trust my instincts. Close my eyes and take the leap. Yeah, wow. So that's, uh, that's very powerful. So this is what happens when you go on the spiritual journey, right? This is, the, the, this is something's changed. Something's changed within you, right? Something's changed. And it, it's like, oh my God, you know, it's like you, you, the world, I'm just sick of, you know, I'm sick of playing by the rules, right? Something's not the same inside me. Something's changing and I'm sick of playing by the rules because I've been playing by the rules of society. I've been playing by the rules of egoic consciousness, right? And, um, and I'm still suffering, right? I'm still suffering and, uh, I'm just sick of it, right? So that, that's why many people go on the spiritual path is because they're sick of playing someone else's game, right? Playing the ego game, playing the insanity out there, right? And you, you get to a point where I'm not going to second guess anymore. And I'm, it's, it's too late to go back to sleep because you're starting to awaken. You're starting to awaken. And you're like, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go back to sleep, you know? I don't want to go back to this. So you decide to take the leap, right? And for everybody out there, and if you're watching this, you have probably taken the leap. So I have mad respects for you. And uh, because taking the leap is something which we're going to get into uh, that is very hard to do in society and people around you don't want you to take the leap, right? So you close your eyes and you take the leap. Close your eyes, I love that, because it's sort of like you're surrendering. You're surrendering and you're trusting a higher power. You're trusting, you know, something bigger than you. You're, you're trusting your truth, your eternal truth. And you take the leap, right? So to everyone out there, congratulations for taking the leap, taking the leap. And I know it's hard and there's many times where it, it sucks, but it, it gets better, it gets better, and you're grateful for it. All right, I don't want to get too, I don't want to get too ahead of me, ahead of air. I'm trying to, it's a little windy out here. I'm trying to. I think I'll try defying gravity. Yes. As we get a train, see life goes on. Life goes on when you're trying to defy gravity, right? And in a way, it's like 
this is this is what this is a good metaphor is that a lot of people are traveling on the same track they're on the same track and they're or they're they're stuck on the ground they're stu they're not defying gravity right where uh, it's too cloudy out but usually there's planes there I'm kind of near an airport but you're not defying gravity right it's time I try to find gravity I'll think I'll try to find gravity and you can't pull me down so this is great. This is like you're starting on the spiritual path and you're just like, oh, okay, I'm going to defy great. I'm going to do something different. Um, I'm going to go on the spiritual path. It's like that Robert Frost poem uh, to, I was in a wood and then two, two paths. I came across two paths and then, you know, I took the one less traveled, right? The road less traveled, right? You're taking the path less traveled. And although more and more people are, are going on the path, it's still less traveled, right? So let's continue. I'm through accepting I'm I'm through accepting limits because someone says it's so. Some things I cannot change, but till I try, I'll never know. Too long I've been afraid of losing love, I guess I've lost. Well, if that's love, it comes at much, too much a higher cost. So, you're, 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 th you're, you're, th again, you're through playing the game, you're through with accepting limits, because this is very limiting, you know, this, this egoic consciousness is very limiting, right? On, on the big, scale on the on a spiritual scale you know uh because someone says it so you know because everyone's playing the game and everyone's you know saying you got to play within these these rules right of ego consciousness and within those rules of course some people do better and some people do worse blah 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 but everyone's still stuck in the egoic game in the egoic rat race, right? Um, I, I like this, I'm afraid of losing the love I guess I've lost. Well, if that love, if that's love, it comes at too much a co high cost. It's like, oh, we love, you know, it's like this love is all conditional. It's not unconditional love. The, you know, ego consciousness love. Well, uh, if you do this, if you act this way, if you, you know, then I'll love you, right? If I, you know, if I, if I play the game, then I'm, I'm loved or liked or whatever. But when you stop playing the game, then you're like, whoa, whoa, they don't love you. Honey. So it's like, that love, that egoic love comes at too high a cost. It's not true. It's not true love. So I'd sooner buy defying gravity, kiss goodbye, and defying gravity. So you start awakening uh, and you can't bring, you can't pull me down because that's what people want to do. They want to pull you down. You, you, you say, okay, I'm going on the spiritual path. I'm going on the spiritual journey. And they're like, oh, no, you're not. I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm there. You know, people are going to try to pull you down. So when you go on the spiritual path, you have to. And this is why it's very difficult for a lot of people to go on the spiritual path is because they're afraid to sort of like rock the boat. They're afraid, or, and because people around them are are going to be like because they're going to lose some friends and family members you know they're not going to understand so they're like you stop playing this game this egoic game and they're going to try to pull you back down they're going 
and unfortunately you're gonna you know it, well it's just the way it is is that you you know some pe people don't want to either be around you anymore or because you're not playing the game anymore or you don't want to be around them because you just see how silly that how they are acting and how engulfed in ego consciousness they are right but they still want to pull you back down they you know so you have to really defy defy gravity and leave and say you can't pull me down and getting back to defying gravity um that's that's what it could feel like that's what it could feel like when you have the awakening when you have the spiritual awakening is that you feel lighter you feel like you're defying gravity you feel like you're you're floating you're not burdened anymore by ego egoic consciousness right um angels uh Angels have wings, right? Angels have wings. And I really think that um, they're sort of like a representation of, in, in, you know, enlightened peop people. Because enlightened people, you could feel like you're, you're flying, like you're floating, right? Because for the first time, you're feeling your eternal truth, which is peaceful. It's light. It's not this heavy. The ego, egoic consciousness is very heavy. It's very burdened, right? It's very like, uh, uh, uh. I'm kind. It's it's like uh, remember in a Christmas Carol that uh, the movie or the play or whatever Jacob Marley, the 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 ghost of Jacob Marley is. He's like hunched over and he's got chains on his heavy and he's like, ah, Ebenezer Scrooge, right? It's like, it's like that, that's like e ego consciousness. And that's what we're all, we all have around us. We just like, ah, I'm kind of like bending down. <laughs> like I'm, like I've burned, you know, chains of the past and blah, blah, blah. And, but we all, I mean, I certainly have had that. I mean, I, I was burdened down, right? So you feel lighter, you, you feel freer, freedom, right? When you have an awakening and it, especially as you deepen. Um, so it goes down, it goes to unlimited, unlimited, right? I'm unlimited, you feel unlimited, right? Because that's what your eternal truth is. Your uh, eternal truth is uh, unlimited. Now you're still in the world of form, so it's not like, you know, you, you have these superhero, you know, powers where you could f literally fly over there or whatever. But, but there's just a sense of, um, being unlimited right and then uh, I think it's funny because some of the dialogue then is like the so the other so this is the uh, Wicked Witch of the West right um, I forgot her name Elphaba Elf or something like that um, and she's singing this but then her friend I think which is Glinda uh, kind of doesn't want her to go on, on defying gravity, you know. Um, so the other witch, the good witch says, I hope you get it, and I hope you don't regret the lit. Uh, I hope you don't live to regret it. I hope you're happy at the end. I hope you're happy, my friend. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. At, at first, she says, uh, oh, I hope you're happy now that you're choosing this. I hope it brings you bliss. So uh, basically the same. I mean, basically, um, your friends or people around you could be like, wow, I hope you're happy. You know, almost like sarc sarcastically. Well, I hope this br brings you bliss, you know, because everybody wants the temporary. Everybody wants the temporary fix, the temporary happiness, right? Um, 
they don't want the eternal, right? Or they don't want to do what they what it takes to have the eternal. And then they're like, well, I hope you don't live to regret this. Because when you go on the spiritual path, I mean, for a lot of people, it's it could really change your life. I mean, you could you could change your job. You could you give up things um, and uh, it could rock your life. I mean, I mean, and it could be very difficult to do. And again, this is why a lot of people don't want to defy gravity. They don't want to go on the spiritual path because it's it could be very hard, right? It could be very hard. Um, all right, so let me go back. So we continue on the story. So if you care to find me, look to me in the western sky. As someone told me lately, everyone deserves a chance to fly. So this is true. Everybody deserves, everybody watching this out there, you deserve to awaken. You deserve to defy gravity. You deserve a chance to fly. Okay? Everybody, no matter what your past, what, you know, what blah, 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 where you're at right now, whatever, you know, limitate, whatever, you deserve to awaken, you deserve to fly, right? And everyone can, right? Everyone can. And if I'm flying, at least I'm flying free. I love that because that's what it's about, liberation, right? Liberation, you're free. That's what awakening, that's what enlightenment is all about. It's free, it's liberation. You're a free being. You're free. Ooh, there's a kind of, some kind of bird in there. I don't know if you can see it. There, you're like that bird. I think that's a hawk or something. I don't know, can you see that? So you're like that bird right there. You're flying free. See how free that is? I think you could see it. <laughs> You're flying free. I love it. And to those who ground me, take a message back from me. Tell them how I'm defying gravity. Yeah. So. So I, at least I'm f flying free. I love it. And to those who ground me, see, people want to ground you, right? When you when you start healing the the pain bodies and and you're freer and you're there's this natural happiness, you know. There could be some people out there who are like. You know, there are people out there who, because their egos are so, they don't, they don't like happy people, right? It, you know, it, it, you know, right? And I, 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 I'm sure I used to be one of those, like, ah, wipe, you know, wipe that smile off that face, right? You don't want pe, you know, you're either jealous or whatever, because you, you want to be free, you want to be flying, right? You want to be flying, you want to be free. Um, all right, so we're going to go to the end and soon I'll match them in renown, renown and nobody in all of Oz, no wizard that there is or was is ever going to bring me down. That's right. So as you awaken and as you deepen, you know, no one, no one can bring you down. No one can bring you down anymore. You're free. You're free as a bird, right? Free as a bird. And you're soaring and you're flying and you're you're liberated, right? You're defying gravity. You're an awakened being. Right? So so 
anything, you know, anything can happen and you're not, you're not being sucked back down into this egoic consciousness anymore. You're free. You're free. You're defying gravity all the time. Now this part I, I find is cool. So this is near the end of it. Um, then the people in Oz are saying, I hope you're happy. Look at her. She's wicked. She's wicked. Go get her. No one mourns the wicked. Go. We have to bring her down. We got to bring her down. And I just thought that that was just very, very powerful for like, just to remember that people want to bring you down. But also in the past, you know, a lot of women, this is, this is called wicked. This is about a witch, right? So a lot of women in the past who had awakenings, um, were branded a witch, right? They, they had a spiritual awakenings and, and, you know, for, you know, because, you know, you, you know, the men couldn't, you know, deal with it or, or whatever, but they were branded witches, right? And, and many of them suffered where they were tortured or killed or burned to the stake or whatever. Um, so I just thought that that was interesting, you know, and, and today, you know, there are a lot of women awakening. I mean, a lot of men, a lot of women, but, you know, you know, both genders, but, but it's so cool that there's a lot of women awakening right now and a lot of women teachers and everything, which is great. And cause we, we definitely need both men and women teachers and, um, uh, you know, transgendered and, you know, you know, non-binary, whatever. Cause all, because when it, when it gets down to it, it doesn't matter if you're a man or woman or whatever gender, transgender or non-binary, whatever you are. You can defy gravity. Whoever you are. Okay. And hopefully, you know, these videos can help or, or, you know, or other spiritual teachers can help because it does, because at the end of the day, we are all the same. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're a man or woman or, you know, transgender or, or, or not, no gender. Everyone is a beautiful manifestation of source of God. Okay. And everyone deserves to defy gravity. Okay. So that's one of the great things that I love about this song. And, and, you know, the, the, the musical has a nice message to, uh, to that. All right. So that's it. Yes, bird. There's a bird over there. That bird defies gravity. You can see that. So, um, love you and, uh, hope this is help. And until we meet again in the, I'm defying gravity. I'm defying gravity. Beautiful now moment. We.